Hey everyone, welcome back to Living Beyond Sunday, the podcast where we talk about the everyday Christian life. My name is Jonathan Sams, and I'm back here with Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, we have a great topic for today, but real quick before we get into what that topic is, I want to encourage everyone listening or watching, if you're listening, hop over to our YouTube channel, Image ATL. We're going to be doing a giveaway in our next podcast. We did one before, right? We did one last year during yeah. this time, yeah, and so we get to do that again. But you have to be subscribed on YouTube, and then we'll give you instructions for what we're giving away and how to enter in our next podcast on YouTube. Um, so make sure you can get a head start on that. You can go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Image ATL, on YouTube, and then be on the lookout for our next podcast in a couple of weeks where you can enter that giveaway. You got to tell them what it is now or wait? No, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. You got to listen to that podcast. Nice. And then... You can I enter. So uh, be on the lookout for that in our next one. With that being said, today we are talking about fitness, but namely the topic of are Christians called to be healthier? Um, I think this is a topic that pops up. Uh, you and I watched the CrossFit Games this past week. The Olympics just happened. This idea of peak physical health. And I feel like it's one of the most neglected topics in Christian churches when it comes to dealing with sin that is associated with it, both positively and negatively, and just how we should approach it in general. So starting off, what would your answer be if someone went to you and said, Pastor Mike, are Christians called to live healthier? Yeah, well, first, I would say one of the things that's really interesting um, is that when you look at the Bible, so often we overlook um, food and the impacts and implications of food that it has, right? So even when you look at the fall, it came through food, right? When you look at, um, you know, uh, Cain and Abel and the birthright, food. You know, there's so many different places. I mean, you look at uh, Ruth, uh, the book of Ruth, when uh, you, you've got um, the family that goes into the land of Canaan, right? Why do they go there? For food. You know, like there's so many things uh, that we see attached to food when it comes to the Bible. And so, um, and there's warnings against that, right? Like a lot of times food leads to something else. And uh, I just think it's interesting when you look at scripture and see that. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, I would say that Christians are called to honor and steward what God's given. And I think we've got to view the body through the lens of stewardship. And so everything that we have is a gift from God, James 1. Um, and so we want to make sure that we steward our bodies to the best that we possibly can. So yes, I would say that we are. Yeah. So Let's flesh that out a little bit because I can hear arguments kind of on both sides of this. Like, yeah, we, you know, Christians should be healthy because our bodies are temples. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But then I can hear the other side, maybe like, well, doesn't it say that God ordains the days we're on this earth? So like, well, what's the point in general if we're just God knows when we're going to die and I just want to enjoy my my food, my life. And if I'm if I'm overweight, if I'm unhealthy, so be it. So be it. Yeah, and I think to that point, we don't do that with anything else. Like, we wouldn't say that with anything else, right? We don't say the same thing about your money. Like, well, you know, you're only here for so long, and so whatever you do with your money, it doesn't matter. Like, just spend it all on yourself today or go, That's you true. know, yeah. swindle it all away. And, you know, we don't do that with other uh, principles. And so we don't do that with marriage. Say, like, well, you don't know when your life's going to end. And so, you know, go ahead, live it up and, like, sleep around. But we, we just don't do that. And so I think that's the, the challenge is so often we kind of overlook this element. Um, and we're inconsistent in a lot of ways. And so I would say that that's, that's a reality. The second part of this is going back to the idea of stewardship. We've got to understand, that, again, we're talking to Christians here, right? So as Christians, everything that we've been given, every good and perfect gift comes from above, James 1. And so we've been given bodies. That is a good gift from the Lord. We've given life. That is the most greatest gift that we could get is life. And so we're called to steward what we have for the sake of the glory of God. And so I think we've got to view it from the lens of stewardship. And that doesn't mean you can't enjoy things, but it means like, how are you going to steward the body that God's given you? How are you going to steward the money that God's given you? How do you steward the marriage God's given you? How do you steward the kids God's given you? We, we look at this in other venues. I think so, so often we miss it when it comes to our own personal lives. Yeah, that's true. I feel like, I don't know how much you keep up with like fitness, YouTube, fitness, social media, but I feel like fitness has been one of those things on social media that you never see like the healthy middle. <laughs> you see, right. you see like people who are just all in, that dedicate their whole lives, either uh, even in an unhealthy way, taking steroids, like that's just all they do. And then you see people who are like, yeah, like that thing's not for me. Like I just want to enjoy my life. And f as Christians, how should we think about having a healthy middle when the world is kind of holding up two parallel extremes that don't seem healthy at all? Yeah, this is what I love again about the concept and even the principle of just stewardship in general. Stewardship keeps us from being on in the extremes on either side. And this is true for, for lots of things, right? When it comes to our money or it comes to other things. Stewardship, when we view it this way, it keeps us out of the extremes because it's not about being um, overly obsessive when it comes to eating, but it's also not about being overly obsessive when it comes to fitness. It's just saying like, hey, I've been given this gift. What does it look like for me to have that balance and and use that deference in my life of going like, what, what does this mean for me? And so 
um, I think that you can um, navigate this with a lot more freedom and not rigidity. And I think a lot of times we want rigidity. That's what we, we love, right? We tell me exactly what to do and how to do it. I don't think we get a, um, you know, prescribed health plan or fitness plan in scripture. Um, but what I do think we see is uh, we're called we're called a steward. I'll share another passage with you that I think is really helpful. And uh, Paul's writing to the, the church in Corinth, and he's addressing the issue of sexual immorality. But he says something really profound on the back end that I think is applicable even beyond sexual immorality. Um, but he says, uh, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, uh, whom you have from God? And then here's the big line. You are not your own. You were bought with a price, so glorify God with your body. And so I think it asks the question, the question we should ask is like, how do we glorify God with our body? Well, that would be through stewardship. And so again, I think there's much more of a freedom and, and some nuance with like, what does that stewardship look like? But we do kind of know what it doesn't look like, which is the, the over abuse of our bodies or the overeating, right? Like gluttony is a sin that scripture talks about a lot that oftentimes people don't talk about. Southern right. Baptist pastors are the worst at not addressing <laughs> this because it's an issue for them a lot of times. Power right? in the potluck. <laughs> yes, yeah, power in the potluck, man. I'm telling you what, it's like, we'll, we'll talk about everything else but that. And so, you know, scripture does talk about gluttony, which is the sin of, of overeating, overindulging, right? Eating way past when you're full, that kind of thing. Um, so we know it doesn't look like that, um, but it doesn't say that, um, oh man, stewardship of your body means that you look like this and there's a prescriptive kind of look. That's the other thing we have to be mindful of is our culture has kind of said this is the standard for health. And I think what we do is we try to measure ourselves to culture standard of health. And then we feel like we can never get there. And right. so we just kind of abdicate ourselves or we feel like overwhelmed. And so it's really important that we don't assume the, the culture standard of health and go like, well, that's what it is. And then we have this image. And now we start to attach, you know, physical appearance to what health looks like. And I would just say I would push against um, physical appearance being the only way that we define health because there are certain people that may look healthy that are actually not healthy and so I think that's something to be to be mindful of and we've got to be careful that we don't start because now, now you get into envy and you know all this kind of stuff and and I've said this before to our people but I'm like you know if you're if you're not fit you know you want the abs of the other person you don't have and the person that has the abs wants your cupcake so like <laughs> nobody's ever happy if that's all we're after is like a thing as opposed to uh, more of a framework which is stewardship yeah and I think that framework is interesting too right because like we're talking about physical health to a certain extent, but the Bible kind of describes health as holistic, both spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, all being interconnected. And I think that's something to consider, you know, for the vast majority of Christians, like we have to approach it from the way the Bible would approach it, which is, you know, you have a mind, you have a soul, you have a body, and you need to steward all of those things well to be in peak health. So like when we're talking about health, you know, as Christians, we, we kind of, we should talk about holistic health, not just one aspect. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that's unique about when we're talking about, you know, health and, and our bodies and is that when you are trying to steward your body well and trying to be uh, or pursue um, any type of fitness level, what studies show over and over and over again is that you're more mentally healthy, you feel more physically healthy, um, right? Your, your spirits are higher. There's different chemical reactions that happen in your brain when you work out. Stress levels go down, right? Like there's all these different factors that are actually really, really good. And so, again, I think if, if the goal is, I mean, we want to steward our bodies and that means, you know, taking care of them as, as best as we are capable of in certain seasons and you know, again, showing lots of grace with that. There's not a hard line and a concrete standard that I think so often maybe we fall into. Um, you know, and then the other thing is I think other people can can also idolize it, right? There's an idolization of image. So it's, it's beyond health. It's like, I, I don't, it's not about health anymore. It's about image and how I look and how other people perceive me. And so now I idolize my own self image. And so I'm pursuing health, not for the sake of stewardship, but for the sake of like presence and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's tons of places we can go wrong in this. And I think it's really important to understand this has got to be grace filled. And again, asking the question like, man, how do I best steward my body? It might be that, you know, in this season of your life, you go for a walk, you know, it might mean you take the stairs instead of the elevator. It might mean that you begin to pursue next steps toward a fitness class or, um, you know, a gym membership. Like the, the question is, are you pursuing a healthy li lifestyle to the best way that you possibly can in the specific season of your life? Yeah, that's really good. Because I think like what well, what I don't want people to hear is, you know, if you're uh, if you don't meet society standards that's of what right. it looks like to be healthy, that that means you're somehow out of line with biblical standards of stewardship. I don't think that's the case at all. I don't think you think that's the case at all. But to ask the question, are you at least considering what it looks like to steward your body right. in not just how you discipline yourself to avoid sin, 
but also how you take care of it for longevity. Right. And there's so many ways this plays out. Sleep, right? Fitness. Right. Yes. Food that you put in your body. And there's there's so many ways this can play out. And again, with the chaos of our culture and the chemicals and all these, like it's got to be grace filled. Like there's not a rigid approach that you can be like, here's the mandate of what it looks yeah. like to, you know, steward your body well. And and obviously there are um, people that struggle with um, you know, genetic ailments or, or diseases right. or there's so many factors that play into this that we have to be mindful of. And so there cannot be this sort of, you know, pharisaical approach to where we like look down on other people because you don't know what's going on uh, in their life. We're responsible for, for our bodies and to say like, man, how are we going to, how are we going to steward them well? And uh, so, so being mindful that you're contemplating and considering that. And I, and I think asking, um, man, how much attention am I giving to my physical health? You know, um, we, we always evaluate everything, right? We evaluate our marriage. How, how, how often am I, am I dating my wife or my spouse? You know, how often am I discipling my kids? And what does that look like in, in rhythms? We want to do the same thing personally. I think that's the big heart of this podcast is just to cultivate a sense of awareness yeah. for the, the what I would say the call to steward our bodies is. And, um, you know, there's other examples you could, I mean, um, you think about Daniel, you know, there's a Daniel fast that a lot of churches do, but, you know, we see Daniel taking care of his body and his men's body as they're going into, you know, service. And there's a, there's a consideration for that. Um, so I, I just think that's the big heart of this thing is, you know, don't overthink it, uh, but don't not think about it at all. Yeah. And I really like the concept that you brought up on the opposite end, which I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. It's the idolization of it. Yeah. Like there's you and I know like there's a massive kind of movement within Christian circles to like do CrossFit and work out a ton. And you, you and I both love to work out, but there can be this unhealthy infatuation with the uh, building of, of yourself in that way. But I don't hear a ton of pastors or people talking about that in the Christian community. Uh, Could you speak a little bit more? Like how do you evaluate if you're falling into that camp? Right. Some of this, you got to evaluate your heart Yeah. in the same way that we check our heart and everything else that we're doing, you know, when it comes to, you know, our jobs at work and the money that we make, um, you know, where our hearts are when it comes to, you know, what our eyes are looking at and all these kind of things. We, we've got to do the same thing when it comes to our bodies and say like, man, um, you know, what point does this become vanity? You know, what point is this about like, you know, how I look to other people, um, you know, really get at the why behind it. And there's nothing wrong with the desire to look good. Right. Or, or whatever you think good is, you know, and again, I think it's up to you. And, and you know, what do they say? Beauty's in the uh, the eye of the beholder. Right. So I think that's a whole, that's kind of a whole nother side to this thing, too, of like I think a lot of people people are chasing after the world standard of beauty when there's not an actual standard of beauty. Right? right. It's in the eye of the beholder. And so what we've done is we've kind of categorized beauty and it's like this is what it looks like to be beautiful or handsome or whatever. And so you have people shooting for that. And so that is kind of their aim in life. And so it's their idol. But they also it's the thing that they serve. And, you know, so I think we've, we've got to be really careful, careful at what standards we set. Again, it's, it's fine to say I want to look healthy or I have certain goals of where I want to get a certain, you know, I want to hit a, I want to be healthy in this way or this way. And there's a hundred ways you can measure it from weight to BMI to, you know, um, how far you can swim to how much you can lift. Like, th again, there's, there's freedom in that. Um, but, but I think we've got to be careful that we don't begin to um, see that and say, like, man, that's, that's what we're going after. Because if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves at a place where we, you know, we're struggling with, with vanity and it's all about us and, and how we look. And, um, it's just a, it's a really slippery slope. Yeah, that's really good. Um, when it comes to kind of the past, I, I did want to get your thoughts because it's semi related. Um, I don't know, you, you, you and I were chatting before about the CrossFit games and when it comes to, uh, the kind of the tragedy that happens there. Um, I think when it comes to that for, I want to get your thoughts because that even proves the fact that like, you know, those people are in peak physical condition, and there was a tragic death during yeah. a competition that these people are top 100 in the world when it comes to their fitness. So even that, you could dedicate your whole life to fitness, and it goes back to God ordains the days that we're on this earth. And so when it comes to how much time and effort you put into it on this topic of idolization, I think there is like it's hard to find that balance. And we, we always go back to community. But what factor do you think it plays in to help? Uh, one, to have a community around you that's pushing you towards fitness, but not to have it in an unhealthy way to where you kind of buy into this, like, I just want to keep going at this to an unhealthy level. Yeah. Well, one of the things to evaluate is like what you're willing to sacrifice for it. Like there are some people that will not miss a workout, man, they will work out every single day, but man, they'd never spend time in the word, mm. right? Like, and if you're up against a, a jam and you're like, I can either miss my workout or miss my time in the word, like, what am I going to do? And people would choose workout, right? Or, or it's like, man, I will not miss my workout and I'm on my workout regiment, but like, I'm not involved in the local church. 
you know, and so it shows like from a prioritization level, you, you look at it and you're like, man, what are you willing to sacrifice for it? You know, and, and whichever one you sacrifice for the most is, you know, chances are that's the one you're serving and that's what is your functional savior and Lord at this point. And so I think for a lot of people, there does have to be an eval check on like, man, how much emphasis am I putting on this? How much time is it really taking? Again, there, there's nothing wrong with like, man, I'm going to get up and get at them and I want to be healthy for my kids and, you know, I want to try to work out every day. But like, if you can't miss it and, and be okay with that, Ah, oh, man, that's just, I think it's an, a, a point of question to say, like, yeah. how much do you really, truly, like, lean into this? Because yeah. there can be this habitual kind of connection that you have to fitness because of what it does with your mind and brain. It's, that it's a good thing, but, like, man, there's this connection that it's almost like you have to have it, and it's like a drug, um, you know, that, that you can't live without. I think we also have to be careful in that front. Like, is your family suffering because you're at the gym? Like, you know, how's your spiritual life? Is it suffering because you're at the gym? Like, there's got to be a healthy balance in your life. And again, this is where I go back to this idea of stewardship. It brings freedom. I mean, it's the same way when we talk about money in a lot of ways. There's freedom in how you spend it, but there's some parameters that Scripture lays out and says, hey, here's the what it looks like to steward the money. But there's tons of ways that you can kind of flesh it out beyond that, right? And so I think yeah. it's really, really important that stewardship is the marker. Like, And you're asking the question, am I stewarding the gift of life through my body that God's given me to the best that I functionally can? Because there's also people that functionally and physically cannot participate in fitness. you know. And so that's why we also have to say it's bigger than just exercising. It's bigger than just, right? Like whatever season of life you're in, you're trying to do the best that you can to take care of the resource and, and life that God's given you. Yeah, that's really good. And going back to what you were saying, like it's holistic, like your spiritual health matters just as much as your physical, your mental health matters just, and a lot of times they're all interlinked. Um, so if one is out of whack, the, it'll affect the others. And I think that's really interesting to think about. Um, in, in closing, may, what about a, someone who uh, kind of has, feels like they have a good grasp at this? Um, what do you, what would your advice be or maybe encouragement be to a person that's like, you know, I really try to think through this in a healthy way. I agree with what you laid out. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm still staying on track. What would be your kind of encouragement or advice to that person? Yeah, I mean, I think there's kind of two groups of people I would specifically talk to. One is in that camp and the other is in, in, in another. But I would say for that person, you know, evaluate your rhythms in life. How much weight are you giving to your workouts or your health? You know, how much how much money is it costing you, right? I mean, we know this, but, but everything that you're trying to do, you know, is going to call you to you know, sacrifice or pay for it in some capacity. So like to what extent is the pursuit of health that thing? Um, also is, is your hope really contingent on your health? Because inevitably what can happen is we begin to put our hope in ourselves. And like, if I can stay healthy, then I can beat, you know, all the odds and I can, you know, if I eat right and I do these things and like, you know, then I'll live forever, you know, and almost that mentality of like, we can kind of save ourselves. And it's like, man, you're not God. And at the end of the day, anything, and I, you brought up the, the, the tragic incident. I mean, it shook me up just thinking yeah, about the incident, yeah. um, at the CrossFit games of like, man, this, this guy who is out here you know, trying to have fun, competing it. It's not his full-time job kind of deal. Right. You know, he's out here doing it and, you know, probably went into cardiac arrest in, in the midst of a swim and, and man, he passed away and it just is like, wow, it's just a, a reset, Tragic. Uh, you know, breaks your heart for him and his family. Yeah. And then it's a reset to go, man, it doesn't matter how fit you are. Like anything can happen at any point in time, at any moment. It could be a car wreck. It could be whatever. Right. So I think we do have to be careful. We're not banking our, our trust in that. And so just really having the right perspective and balance. I mean, that's really what it comes down to is, is this consuming you, right? Is it pulling you away from um, the local church? Is it pulling you away from your walk with the Lord, pulling you away from your family? Um, it, it, you know, your effort and, and intentionality, intentionality and intensity toward this. Is it more than anything else? You know, like just be mindful of kind of that, that balance. And I know there's somebody out there is like, well, I do this for my job. All right. You know, like I get <laughs> it. That's a different, you know? Um, and then I think there's another group that I would talk to as well is maybe a group of people that are listening and they're like, man, I just haven't really thought about this. Or I haven't really cared about fitness or maybe they have a certain perspective of how they look or, or they have a feeling about how they look. Listen, you know, the beauty of the gospel is that um, how you look and what you've done does not define you or shape you that Christ ultimately does. And so like the, the goal of this is not to guilt or shame anybody. That's not the hope or heart of the gospel. The, the, the heart of this is just like, Hey, consider, how we can align ourselves with understanding who God is and what he's given us and do our best through community and through um, God's word to take care and steward our mind, our heart and, and our body. And so I don't want anybody walking away from this feeling, you know, guilt or shame or, and again, if you, some of y'all, if you don't hear anything else, 
do not compare yourself to the standard of the world when it comes to beauty or when it comes even to fitness. You know, you, you've got to, every person is different. Psalm 139, each person God's knit together in their mother's womb and they're knit together different. There's no one DNA that's the same. Right. You know, everybody's different. There's different characteristics that you're born with that you got from your parents. And, you know, there's so many factors that play into this. So I really would push against the comparison game. I know there's people that struggle with, with eating disorders and body image issues and all that kind of stuff. Those are very, very, very real issues um, that, man, we, we've got to understand people are walking through those kind of things. And some of you listening may be walking through that. And what I want you to see is, is that your body image does not, it doesn't define you. It's not your identity. Um, and it's, it's ultimately what, uh, not what God sees in you. What he sees is a son or daughter if you placed your hope in him and what he's done for you. And so the call is just to stewardship. And so I do think there's got to be a big caution for people listening that maybe feel, you know, some co- sort of guilt or, or like shame about like that. That is not the case at all. And if Jesus was looking at you today, he would say, I love you exactly as you are. Um, I think about a preach this past week on Zacchaeus and it's like <laughs> Jesus came to Zacchaeus exactly how he was. We little right. man and all, you know, like he came to him exactly how he was. And that's how Jesus approaches us. He doesn't say change your body or your body's not good enough. He says, I made you. I made that body. I bled for that body, um, and one day I'll make that body totally new um, when I come back and, and make all things new. And so there's a hope that's there that I really want people to grab hold of in the midst of this and not feel any kind of guilt or shame. Yeah, that's really good. I appreciate your thoughts on this, and uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you listening and or watching. I want to encourage those of you who are just listening to hop over to our YouTube channel, Image ATL on YouTube. Subscribe, like. It really helps us. But also, if you have questions, you can leave comments on our podcast for us to answer or send us an email at pastormike at imageatl.com. Um, with that being said, like I said at the start, make sure you're, you keep an eye out for our next podcast and we will have a giveaway and details for how to uh, enter that giveaway along with the details of what we are giving away. So make sure you don't miss that on YouTube in a couple of weeks and we look forward to seeing y'all then.